Good morning guys! I've been planning for way too long to start making YouTube videos but I always kind of shied away from like the editing and stuff so I never really knew how to start. I figured I should start eventually because otherwise I would never do it. So here we are. For my first video I thought I should maybe start with something simple. I was thinking of maybe making a tutorial on how to make emotes or how to do line art. I <laughs> actually recorded a video about line art before but I gave up on the editing. <laughs> Ultimately I decided it might be best to start with something even simpler though and that is chibis. There's a few things that are really noteworthy in my opinion but since everyone has a different approach and how they work uh, you kind of have to experiment a little bit. For example there's proportions, color choice and how to render your chibis. I will add timestamps in the video for easy access, just in case you want to skim through. I think I've talked enough about introductions, so let's just start, right? Proportions There's a few different approaches to go with your chibi characters. Most people choose 1 to 1 or 1 to 2. I assume some people even pick 1 to 3 to make it look a little less cutesy without being completely normal, if you want to put it like that. I personally am not too much of a fan to it, but to each their own. There's probably tons of other people who actually do like it, and if you enjoy drawing it, go ahead. Don't let others ruin your enjoyment of things. So what exactly do these proportions even mean? The first one stands for the size of the head. The number after basically just means how many hats fit into the body. One to one just stands for the whole body being exactly the same size as the hat. One to two on the other hand is twice as tall as the hat itself. To show you how exactly I use it, I recorded a work process of mine. The character I'm drawing here is a VTuber friend of mine named Hexira. Hexi in short. She also has helped me a lot with drawing chibis with just one little tip, and that is this one. You basically just draw two circles, same size. Feel free to just draw one and copy paste the other. The circles represent the proportions. One is for the head, the other is for the body. If you go for one to two, it is three circles, being one for the head and two for the body. Feel free to experiment with that, doing one to 1.5 or whatever you feel comfortable with. This step helped me so much with keeping my proportions consistent and I feel like my chibis turned out so much cuter than before. Thank you again for this sexy. Also, if you're not used to checking proportions, I can only recommend doing so. I never did until recently because I thought it's such a beginner thing to do and I don't need it. But honestly, ever since I started doing it again, I felt such a difference in my drawings again that I don't really want to go back to not checking them, for the time being at least. One to one is probably what most people consider the cutest, though sometimes one to two can look much better, though also more mature and less just cute. I have to admit that depending on art styles and character designs, proportions might look off, so you might want to just try testing around. Speaking of character designs, we can go right to the next important topic. Details and simplifying. For chibis you usually try to keep it simple. I honestly never really gave it a lot of thought in the past and I assume a lot of other people didn't either, but drawing chibis or emotes is so much different than drawing just regular normal body proportions and you shouldn't just go and do what you normally do. Drawing things overly detailed on chubby small bodies can easily look super uncanny. I did my fair share of this in the past too, I'm definitely not innocent. Hard edges are usually drawn less hard. You usually try to avoid long, thin objects too. Everything looks more round in general and you would want to try not adding too many random lines here and there to not clutter it even further. Funnily enough, I have an example for that from just this year actually. The artist Sheena Ray did a pattern collection for Ina's kimono pattern. Me, being lazy with details, kinda jumped on it when I had the chance. Though, I did use it as well when I was drawing a chibi at the beginning of this year. Looking back at it, I realized that the overly detailed pattern on the kimono looks just a tad bit odd. 
Something that most likely should have been simplified to not take too much attention away from the cute round face of the TV. Remember to simplify details that you feel would pull away too much attention from the important bits. You decide what the focus should be with the way you draw it. Always remember. Over detailing is also a thing that can happen a lot with shading and rendering, which leads me to the next and last important part. Colors. For chibis you usually want to pick brighter, more saturated colors. My usual art is pretty dull or rather natural in colors, but in the past I did use a lot of bright colors. With chibis, those work perfectly. Bright colors usually pop out more and feel very energetic and radiate positive energy. Considering chibis are usually supposed to feel cute and playful, bright colors work best for this. Another important thing is to not over detail with the shading too much. Pick one or two different shades to put down shadows and make sure they have enough contrast. Too little contrast results in the shading looking muddy or barely being noticeable even. To check if you chose proper colors for this, you can look at your work in black and white. That way it is much easier to notice if you perhaps could use some darker colors. It's also best to keep the shadows simple. Maybe more of a cell shading rather than a very soft shading. You can do both of course, but keep it simple. To show an example, if I would have picked duller colors for this chibi, it would look much less engaging. The colors don't pop as much and I personally feel like it would be much less eye-catching. This naturally can be used for certain things too, if you want to add a more subtle addition to a text without interrupting the reader's flow for example. Feel free to test around with that as well. Finding out what works best for you is important. And despite others maybe telling you otherwise, there never is a one true way for anything. For the end, I will add a sped up work process of another chibi to let you see how I work. Maybe it helps you to learn from it as well.
So, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any suggestions on what I could do better for the next video, or even some for what I could talk about next time, feel free to let me know in the comments. I also regularly stream on Twitch, feel free to follow me there too for art and gaming streams. Until next time, bye bye!